With the East African Safari Classic just around the corner, there were several classics taking part, using the event as a final test before taking on the 10-day marathon. Jonathan Soman and Rue Heckel were in a Mark II escort, and the outing was invaluable, although it didn't last long. They lost all spark from the rotor arm, and by the time the problem was found, they were time-barred. This was Samira Khan's second attempt at driving, and together with Anita Irwin, she was just out to gain experience. Apart from landing on that rock, their rally was uneventful, and they made it to the finish after a steady and consistent drive. Despite rolling on stage 2, which cost them 20 minutes in lost time, Robbie Bumra and Havinda Jutley put it back on its wheels, patched it up and continued to push the Datsun 240Z hard. By the end, they even recovered 9 places on the leaderboard. Aslam and Ashad Khan in the ALS Porsche 911 stormed through the stages, and having sorted out all the teething problems, the car was in peak form. Aslam's extensive rallying career includes having entered the first Guru Nanak rally 38 years ago. Yes, way back in 1972. 72 or 71, I can't remember. It's been a long time. <laughs> and obviously you got your Porsche out because you're practicing for the very next event. That's right, yeah. And in fact, we, we are not even using the pace notes in this rally. We just going. We just made danger notes so that we get used to the uh, danger notes of this fire rally. They have already won the Classic Car Cup and finishing this rally simply put them even further ahead. As expected, the fastest of the classics were Alistair Cavan and Gavin Lawrence in the Mark II Escort. They were faster than most of the group ends, setting times just outside the top 10, eventually finishing 11. The other category that was interesting to watch were the two SPVs entered. The Toyota Hilux driven by Manik and Jasmine Chuda was originally built and rallied by Ian Duncan, who took it to several wins during the two years he drove it. Then passed on to Giancarlo Giraldi, who only had one outing in it. It has since been rebuilt and Manik and Jasmine Chuda were hoping to prove it was still a winner. But on stage two, the clutch packed up and they were forced to retire. The hybrid, driven by Simon Sharp and Raju Chaga, was built for cross-country events, in which it has proved to be extremely competitive. They were entering for fun and were surprised to spend the day well inside the top 10. They overtook many of the group ends ahead of them and, apart from puncturing, had an impressive run, finishing 8th overall. You know, it's far better than I thought, so I was considering it to be considerably slow. It's just that sometimes it sort of decides it wants to go in that direction and that's more of a, it never feels like it wants to fall over. It just decides to change direction by itself every now and then, which <laughs> keeps us entertained, so yeah. The 14 two-wheel drives entered were only given the first two stages amounting to 72 kilometers for a winner to emerge. James Karimi and Kimeli Career had the opportunity to secure the championship title on this event, but they were up against formidable competition, including Adnan Suhail and the Daihatsu, a very determined Joel Mushiri, Niaz Bashir in the 2-litre Celica, and the defending champions who were making a return in a new VW Golf. Out of the championship race were the two girls, Joan Nesbitt and Tamara Jones. Having failed to finish in their two previous outings, their only goal of this one was to finish. Behind them on the road were Nick Patel and Andy McDonald in a Mercedes 190 taxi, who offered to stop and give them a lift if they broke down, and at a discounted fare. Oh, there yes. was no way he was catching us. And, and he was telling us he's going to overtake, and we're like, no And then we'd have way. to hitch a ride on the taxi. We're like, <laughs> no way. <laughs> as it oh was, they didn't need the ride, as the Tercel stayed reliable to the end, and they kept it on the road ecstatic to not only finish, but also take seven. Nick Patel and Andy McDonald never did see the girls, but in trying to catch them, gained over two minutes on them to finish sixth. 
For James Karimi and Kimeli Career, the rally became a race of perseverance when the car developed a misfire from the start. With no time to find the problem, they had to live with it and only came fifth. Claiming the title would have to wait. The defending champions were not in the championship race and were taking part to shake down their new car. They also fought a misfire throughout the event, losing time especially on the straights, finishing in fourth. The leading three cars had none of these problems and it was a flat-out race, where the outcome came down to the performance of each car. Joel Mushiri had to drive much of the rally blind, with Riaz Ishmael only calling the notes in between nursing a two-take. They did all they could, but it was only good enough for third. From the recce, I had uh, done my, my pace notes according to what I expected, so I could remember exactly 70%. Things were like went to the wire because he was so sick, but I managed to, to finish the event. The Toyota Celica with its 2-litre engine had the advantage where it mattered, and Leas Bashir and Jonathan Koske were quickest through stage one, but were unable to maintain the pace on the long stage and were not unhappy with second. Mine is a two litre, yes, and uh, I'm also new in this game. So I'm just trying to polish my skill. We just fitted a new engine in, and uh, actually I wasn't really pushing hard. 